Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the fifth annual FIS FinTech Demo Day Showcase. And now, live from Little Rock, Arkansas, is Wayne Miller, Executive Director of the Venture Center. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to some parts of you in the world. Welcome to the fifth annual and first virtual FIS FinTech Accelerator in partnership with the Venture Center. We are honored to have you all join us today to experience the product demonstrations and the solutions from these courageous founders from these 10 companies from around the globe. Over 850 of you have joined us today for this event. Thank you so much for participating. As long as we're talking numbers, I'd like to share a few more with you that I think are interesting. Let's start with 1,968. Some of us would say that's 1968, but technically that's how long it took to make the very first FinTech with the founding of Systematics here in Little Rock, Arkansas in 1968. 357, that's the number of bankers that helped co-create co -create the future of FinTech, meeting with these cohort companies over the past 11 weeks virtually. 103, that's the number of FIS product, development, sales, marketing, and leadership people that contributed to this program over the last year. 71, that's the number of subject matter experts that gave their time and wisdom to help these founders improve their solutions and their strategies. Eight, that's the size of the team at the Venture Center that makes this happen. Love you guys. Two, that represents the number of female founders in the current cohort. And women in FinTech is something we simply need more of. Finally, $37.5 million. That's the combined amount of capital that's been raised by these founders to date. And in a few short minutes, I think you'll see why. These are an incredible group. While I'm sure we can all agree that these numbers are impressive, the underlying message here is it's all about collaboration. And collaboration is what sits at the center of the Venture Center's mission, educate, collaborate, and accelerate. But there's one last number, and that's the number one. And that's the number of governors in the state of Arkansas. And we are grateful to our governor, Asa Hutchinson, and his team at the AADC, led by Mike Preston, for their steadfast support over these past five years, providing us with the necessary resources to make this the number one accelerator in the world. Ladies and gentlemen, from the great state of Arkansas, Governor Asa Hutchinson. Thank you, Wayne, and uh, I want to express my appreciation to Gary Norcross as well uh, with his FIS team that's done such a great job in partnering with the state of Arkansas for this uh, FinTech Accelerator program that has really become uh, renowned it is, has such a great international and national reputation. And we want to keep it that way, and it could not be possible without uh, the cohort, uh, the companies that are here, uh, that are presenting their uh, technologies uh, to the financial world. Thank you for joining in this and competing and being such uh, innovators uh, in technology and the financial sector. In Arkansas, uh, we wish that you were here uh, we know that during this COVID environment, everything has changed, uh, but we welcome the opportunity and I want to invite all of you to come to Arkansas at your earliest opportunity to see the role that technology plays in education, to see the way technology is developing through entrepreneurship and through uh, our uh, different sectors of our economy. It is very impressive. One of my goals as governor is to become a micro hub of technology companies, and we're fast approaching that here in the state of Arkansas. One of the reasons is that we have developed uh, an educational program that is second to none, in which we were the first state to mandate computer coding to be taught in every high school in Arkansas. Now we're moving it forward after great success and recognition. We're actually going to be requiring computer science to be a gradu required graduation credit uh, for our students. This will greatly expand the pool of technology talent that will be needed to support companies just like yours. 
And so we're proud of this relationship, and I want to express appreciation also to uh, our economic development team, led by Mike Preston, in which we regularly invest in accelerator programs. And whether it is in the medical field, or whether it's in a financial sector, or whether it is in blockchain technology, we invest in those kinds of startup companies that hopefully will find their future in this state, as well as uh, supporting the industry uh, that brought them to uh, this kind of uh, accelerator program. So thank you and congratulations to all the members of the 2020 uh, class here and for the technology companies that are participating. Thank you. Thank you, Governor Hutchinson, and thank you for the support that you've given to the Venture Center and to FIS, and particularly these accelerators and their founders. Your personal attention to this program has helped showcase the value of doing business in Arkansas. Well, my name is Collins Andrews. I'm the executive in residence for FIS at the Venture Center, and I've had the privilege of this role for all five of the FIS accelerators. I was a retired systematics and all tail information services exec. And I got to come out of retirement to represent FIS, but be embedded uh, with the Venture Center team. The, the origin of FIS is actually with systematics. And so this has been for me like coming home and I have just loved it. So of the people who get to talk today, I guess I'm the only one who can say, well, I knew Gary Norcross when, and I did. Uh, I had the honor of working with Gary when we hired him, which was over 30 years ago. Gary came into the company as a programmer trainee, and, but in that particular program, we were, we were looking for managers, and, and really what we were doing was trying to find leaders. And from the start, Gary was the kind of person that we wanted. He's smart, he's creative, he really understood the business. He's the kind of person that people like to be around, people of all levels. He was a leader, and he's still a leader. So he's now the chairman, the president, and the CEO of what has become FIS. Gary has expanded the company significantly into new markets. He's put together an outstanding leadership team, and he's embraced innovation and entrepreneurship in the financial industry, and that's, that's pretty novel. He's done this worldwide in a company with 55,000 employees. So please welcome one of our Arkansas native sons, and the leader of the world's largest fintech company, Gary Norcross. Thank you, Collins. Uh, er every year when you make this introduction, I always realize I've got to take you on the road with me more often because that kind of glowing praise I don't get very, uh, very often. But when I think back over my career, and uh, you know, as you said, you actually hired me in this company, and so. When I think back over those 32 years, I can't ever think of a time when you haven't been right by my side and actually helping me, mentor me, and, and, and help lead uh, this company. So thank you for all you've done. When I, when I think about this cohort group and I think about the success of the Accelerator over the last five years, to be able to have you as executive in residence, let's not trivialize how important that's been to the overall success. And, could I not be more proud of the success that we've accomplished here with the Accelerator? I think back five years ago when we had this as an idea and what FIS believed at the time, uh, we had already been and become the largest FinTech in the industry and been recognized that for a number of years. But we realized no matter how much capital we were spending, we couldn't build it all ourselves. And so if you date back to even more than five years ago, we started venture-like investing. So we started doing venture investments into startup companies that were well-developed at the time. And so, but we're in the process of raising money and that worked very well for us. But as we started thinking about the accelerator, we started thinking, how do we even get ahead of that? How do we get it to the point where the company's really germinating, where it's just starting, where the idea can really be healthy and molded and shaped? give them access to our executives, give them access to our go-to-market. And could we move from, you know, the accelerator 
into venture investing, into eventually perhaps even part of FIS or a key strategic partner of FIS. And when I look back on that five years ago, and when we started working with the Venture Center and we started working with Governor Hutchinson, what we realized and now looking back is that vision has become a reality. And here we sit on arguably the most successful accelerator in any industry by any measurement. And I couldn't be more proud of. So Wayne, to you and your team, congratulations. Uh, Governor Asa Hutchinson, frankly, when I think about how government and corporations can come together in partnership to make a difference, uh, I can't think of a better example than what FIS in the state of Arkansas has done here. So thank you for all your commitment. I know you put a lot of time into this accelerator. Uh, very, very important for us to continue this partnership, and I look forward to doing it for many years in the future. As we think about the accelerator too, and as we think about FIS and our continued need to grow and our continued need to accelerate and innovate and disrupt, one of the things we've done over the last year is we've now formed a brand new organization within FIS headed up by Asif Ramji as our chief growth officer. And under Asif, we brought all the pieces necessary together to further accelerate innovation and growth for FIS. So I talked about our venture investing. We brought that all under a seat. We've talked about the accelerator. Today, we're here to listen to this new cohort that's being brought all under a seat. All of our product strategy, all of our product management, all of our rapid innovation, all of our uh, you know, try and learn and test and learn scenarios where we're doing very, very quick innovation, all under a seat, Ramji. So it's my real pleasure today to introduce Asif. Asif's been a absolute world-class executive. He joined us through the WorldPay acquisition, but make no bones about it, he has sat in the very seats uh, that this cohort is sitting in today. He's done multiple startups. He's built them. He's taken them public. He's sold companies. He's a real innovator, a real entrepreneur. He's a pleasure to have on this executive team. And so with that as a background, once again, congratulations, Wayne on being successfully recognized uh, for the Finnovate Award. Governor, thank you for everything you do. But with that, it's my distinct pleasure to introduce Asif Ramji. Thank you, Gary. Your commitment to innovation is pivotal as we think about the future of FIS. The 2020 Accelerator Cohort, the Venture Center, and the respective roles that we all play in the financial technology industry. With your support, Gary, we created the Growth Office out of sheer demand for innovation and a disciplined focus on product that's ultimately responsible for driving growth across all of the FIS enterprise. Our investments in innovation allow us to protect our leadership position in the existing markets we serve, expand into adjacencies, and grow into new markets. The FIS FinTech Accelerator in partnership with the Venture Center allows us to do just that. It's really a key part of our overall investment strategy at FIS to develop and bring to market the most innovative leading edge technology innovations that truly advance the way the world pays, banks and invests. The digital and technology transformation taking place today is driving significant changes in financial services. Innovations being driven by both traditional financial services companies, as well as new entrants like yourselves. Without that innovation that companies and entrepreneurs like yourself are driving, our industry wouldn't advance at the pace at which it's doing today. So this is what makes our participation in programs like this so important to FIS's future growth plans. So with that, I just wanna say congratulations to the 2020 cohort companies that have made it uh, through this accelerator program. As Gary said, I can distinctly relate to the phase of business you're going through and how hard it can be. But more importantly, I know how re rewarding it can be as well. So your dedication and entrepreneurial spirit will bring you many successes. We're thrilled to be part of your journey. Thank you, Asif. We are excited to be working with you and the amazing team that you've assembled at the CGO. Gary, thank you for your continued support. You know, each year at Demo Day, I usually get an opportunity to talk to Gary. And he usually asks me, so how's it going? And my response is, 
usually better than last year. And Gary, being the Gary that he is, says to me, so Wayne, why? Why is it better? Well, you know, it's usually pretty easy to explain, but this year I think it's easier to explain than ever before, and even more evident. And that is due to the leadership of the Accelerator's managing director, Daniel Schutte. You know, Daniel started with us a few years ago as program manager, and through his hard work, thirst for knowledge, and his thoughtful approach to building meaningful relationships across the entire fintech ecosystem has delivered without question what I believe has been the best accelerator that we have ever done at the Venture Center. Daniel, congrats on a great program. Thank you for your dedication to our mission at the VC. Ladies and gentlemen, Daniel Schutte, Managing Director of the Accelerator Programs, who will tell us more about the 2020 Accelerator and get us started on the demos. Thank you, Wayne, and thank you for putting up with me for the past three years. Uh, most of y'all won't know this, but Wayne is the first person in the office every day, and he's the last person to leave, and he has been since I started working at the Venture Center. And that is no trivial task when you consider the fact that we're bringing through a couple dozen high-growth, well-funded startups every year. Thank you also to FIS for continuing to trust us. Thank you to all of you on the call. Thank you to the over 350 of you that participated in the program this year. I'm going to keep my remarks short. Obviously, the accelerator looked a little different this year, but we did what we could and we made the most out of it. We implemented an additional FIS internally facing six-week pre-accelerator, or as we've come to call it, an incubation period on the front end of the rigorous three-month acceleration process. Across the entire year, FIS dedicated over 100 personnel, as Wayne mentioned, to working with the cohort companies, but also identified one or two specific champions to guide each company along the way. This level of involvement is a huge commitment and effort, and it is the reason that this program is such a success. Now onto the demos. At the end of each demo, you'll have the chance to indicate if you'd like to meet with the company when a pop-up, when, when a poll pops up on your screen via Zoom. Just click yes or no and we'll follow up with you after the show. That's bankers who are interested in talking to the potential vendor, that's investors who are interested in investing, that's people who just want to talk to the founders because they're awesome. And later, you'll vote, for the you'll vote for your favorite founder at the end of the demos. The winner will take home the 2020 Audience Choice Award. We'll also announce the program MVP, or most valuable participant, which our selection committee has already chosen. We give this company a scholarship to pitch at Finovate in 2021 in front of thousands of bankers and investors. Previous alumni from our programs boast 11 awards from Finovate, seven of those being best in show winners. These founders have gone above and beyond to deliver for FIS and its clients. And now you'll see firsthand what your peers have been so excited about. So on to the demos. And now our first group of founders from Surfly, Silot, and Mall IQ. Our first presenter from Amsterdam, the Netherlands, Tarek Valint, Chief Troublemaker with Surfly. Hey, Tarek Valent from Surfly. Greetings from Amsterdam, and I trust everyone is staying safe. Before we begin, I'd like to extend a very big thank you to the Venture Center and FIS for this incredible opportunity and the invaluable experience that we've taken away over these past few months. Surfly provides co-browsing and video chat technology that empowers your agents and advisors to connect and collaborate online with their customers as if they were sitting side by side. We can instantly upgrade any conversation on any channel and device with one click. We make real-time interaction incredibly easy. The customer just needs to click on a button or a link, and this instantly starts a co-browsing session on your own website, portal, or application. Unlike other meeting conference tools like you're used to, like Zoom and WebEx and Microsoft Teams, we turn your own branded property into the communication platform. We also don't need any third-party application to be downloaded, which makes it much more secure. To go a step further, with security at our core, we allow you to mask sensitive data like social security numbers, tax IDs, credit card numbers, and our powerful audit log API allows you to stay fully compliant of the conversations that are happening on your platforms. We've grown incredibly quick over the past few months from nine superstars to 30 superstars in just seven months. Uh, and we're working with 100,000 uh, advisors and agents around the world in leading financial services institutions. For, for financial services institutions, we help you to improve your digital acquisition and your customer onboarding, most important part on the customer journey. We allow you to exceed your customer's expectations, say those, sim they, those complex uh, loan and mortgage journeys, we can really streamline them 
and we also help to integrate seamlessly within your existing investments, tech investments like CRMs, like Salesforce, or contact center platforms like Nice in Contact, Cisco, or Vonage, who we have strong alliances with. Now, I usually have a deck full of uh, elephants and apple pies to 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 show you, but. We don't have time for that, and I, I'm probably, you know, you, you're going to find much more interest in the product. So we're going to shift gears here, and I'm going to share my screen. What you have here is on the right-hand side, ABN AMRO, a leading Dutch bank. We work with one of their subsidiary companies in uh, commercial lending, but we don't work with the mothership yet. And what I'm going to show you is as real live a demo as it gets to highlight how easy we are to implement. What we can do is we can integrate easily into uh, your, uh, your, your infrastructure with our APIs, uh, really well documented. Uh, ABN AMRO, for example, uh, their subsidiary company, uh, integrated with Salesforce with our API documentation in two days. But here's what we're gonna do. Let's imagine on the right-hand side of the screen, you have a customer who is lost. Maybe they're stuck opening an account and maybe they just need a more, uh, you know, a, a, a more uh, personal interaction. What we can do is we can paste the button, get live help. I'm not hacking them. This is just on my local machine. But what you're gonna find is, let's say you imagine a customer is on the, the website and they start opening an account. They're ready on the phone with an agent. The agent will ask the customer, yeah, we'll help you press that get live help button. Now, it doesn't need to be like that. You can completely customize it, but the customer presses it. Here, we have a pop-up box, which you can completely customize as well into your own branding style. And as you can see, a co-browsing session has started on their domain, ABN AMRO, as you can see. All the agent has to do is ask the customer, what's your PIN? And the customer gives the PIN, 1062, and they press enter. And as if by magic, with no downloads, applications whatsoever, we're connected as easy as apple pie, as we say at Surfly. And what we can do then further is elevate the experience even more into a video chat. So the agent with a click of a button can join the video chat. I'm going to mute myself. And the customer can also, with a click of a button, join the video chat. We can zoom in to have a more, uh, you know, a uh, face to face, and then we can also zoom out. You see four there, it would be an agent and a customer, but it doesn't need to be just that because what you can see here is we can add more people into the session. So if it, the husband really wants that Ferrari and he needs to bring his wife on onto the session to, to, to get the approval, that can happen. Or it could be the frontline support can bring in a mortgage advisor into the session as well very easy. And now the, the agent is then able to help that customer to navigate to the right place to open an account, as you can see here. And we can walk through that journey easily. We can also switch control between the customer and the agent. So the agent can have the control switch to. Now the agent is in control. So it's not passive like those uh, conference tools we mentioned before. This, you're actually collaborating in real time on your existing applications and website. The control can always be switched back to the customer and we can block the agent from pressing uh, you know, uh, important buttons. And we can then continue with applying to become a, 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 you know, a, a customer of, uh, of AVN AMRO, of, of the Dutch bank, very easily and in a more human uh, and personal touch, which is very important. And what you're gonna see here is that we can actually uh, mask this information, like I mentioned, uh, over here, you'll find a telephone number, which I've masked without any code on the website. And it, further on, it asks for tax details. You'll also see on the left-hand side where the agent is, it's masked as well. This required no code on the application itself. Now we can switch the control back to the agent and the agent is able to upload a document, a contract, for example, or in this case, a credit card form for the agent, for the customer to fill in. And it could be a form that the customer needs to sign as well. And we can edit this PDF. We can make this PDF an editable PDF. And we can switch this control back to the customer who can then insert their signature as easy as apple pie. And that really is how easy it is. And we can edit this document and we can also go back to different uh, websites. We work with a leading uh, insurance company in, in the Netherlands called Achmea. Uh, they do health and, and PNC and life. And we can even jump from the bank website over to the, uh, to the partner's website or 
be it an external application like an Ellie Mae or uh, uh, you know any external web apps that you're using on your sign up process. That's a bit of a flavor of what Surfly is. I did rush through it. If you uh, would like to uh, uh, you know find some time to uh, to, to actually uh, go a bit deeper, then I'd be more than happy um, uploading now a uh, a list of our references. You can always email me at Tarek at surfly.com. Thank you very much for listening and stay safe, everyone. Bye. Our next presenter from Singapore, Rinkesh Sharma, Head of Growth with Silot. Hi, everyone. Rinkesh here from Silot. First and foremost, I wanted to give my huge thanks to the FIS as well as the Venture Center team in order to provide us the opportunity in joining this program. A little bit about Silot. So we are a Singapore-based company founded a little over three years ago in 2017, where our focus is on the Southeast Asian market, providing merchant solutions to banks as well as financial institutions. Just a little bit background of our company. So we have been invested by investors across Southeast Asia as well as Japan. We have raised close to $12 million in our Series A investment, as well as having close partnership with Visa as well as MasterCard in order to provide us with payment solutions across the region. Just recently also got awarded by KPMG as one of the leading global fintech. Um, one of our achievements in um, Indonesia as well as in Thailand is in terms of merchant acquisition, where we have acquired close to a million merchants in the region, providing them with financial solutions. So what exactly is the problem right now faced in, by merchants in Southeast Asia? So one of the biggest issues they face is the merchants are under bank. So even they have a bank account, they are not utilizing it to the maximum. So this poses a lot of problems as well as opportunity in terms of financial services. The second biggest problem, believe it or not, is cash which is contributing close to 90% of the transactions in the region. And merchants do not even know how to use a credit card machine or even a terminal in order to process digital payments. So imagine if this is the case, how would credit bureaus or even financial institutions assess the risk if a merchant is trying to apply for services? So that's where Salad comes into the picture. And how we solve that problem is by providing a white label merchant app in the region. In order for us to solve this problem, we tackle it using three features in our product itself. The first part is the merchant aggregator, which is the touch point between the merchant directly to the financial institutions, where normally all the processes are offline, which is being taken place in the branch. Right now, we are taking every single thing online from the moment they upload documents till the moment they apply for different services um, within the uh, financial institutions. The next bit is perhaps the most interesting bit, which is the lead generation, where as they are using our app, where we've got several services such as payments, product uh, accounting, as well as even product inventory, what we are doing is that we are collecting data and information, basically understanding the behavior of the merchants, right? And as we are collecting this data, we provide this information to the financial institution in case these merchants need to apply for certain services. These are specific data, proprietary in, uh, data owned by Silot that can be utilized in order to make better decisions in comparison with data which is already available in the credit bureau. The last and not the least is the payment services where we are trying to focus on the national QR which is being implemented both in Indonesia as well as in Thailand. Perhaps something that is very new in the United States where every single merchant is provided a QR code and consumers would just need to open up their banking app to scan the QR code. But um, these are the solutions which is happening in Asia and perhaps it's quite different from the United States. So after speaking with FIS, a lot of community banks as well as credit unions, we found out that one of the biggest problems being faced is by fintechs like Square and Clover pretty much taking over the big market share of the merchants. So that gave us an idea, right? Like if we, in order for us to come to the US and provide a very compelling solutions, what we plan to do is providing a Square-like white label services to financial institutions, which is entirely different from what we do in Asia. So in Asia, we acquire our own merchants, but in the US, we would directly partner up with a bank and utilize their current app itself, providing a one-stop shop services for the SMEs. So in addition to the services that we already have in Asia, 
What we plan to have in the US is perhaps the in-app inventory management, where merchants can actually uh, manage their stock just by utilizing their camera of their phone and scanning the barcodes of this. So these merchants are smaller merchants like pop and mom shop and food trucks who may not have these services available for them right now. The next part is the POS, where we wanted to understand the fact that the US is a very credit card dominant market so we do not expect merchants to use QR code. So two ways in order to solve this is first by just having a dongle connected to the phone and swiping the credit card directly on it. And the second part is utilizing the contactless payment, the NFC, where we just tap the card to the phone in order to process the payments. The last part is perhaps more on the consumer facing where loyalty points are earned by consu frequent consumers and they can redeem it while going to the merchants itself. So overall, by partnering with FIS, we plan to find out any bank partners or credit unions in the region who would like to do a POC with us, right? In terms of value proposition, that would be twofold in terms of both the banks and the merchants themselves. So for the banks, it is providing a cheaper cost in terms of acquisitions, as well as exploring different technology such as QR and the NFC. For merchants, perhaps we are not directly competing with Square, but then providing direct services for them in order to directly link their services with the financial institutions, as well as having an accounting and inventory tool in order to understand their businesses better. So this is a snapshot of our app in Asia. So the first thing that you'll notice is the payment collection where there's a QR code, which belongs to a merchant. And as a consumer, I'll just scan this QR code as if just like you're scanning a menu and uh, doing it. But in this case, we are actually processing payments, right? But there are cases where merchants are accepting cash transactions from the consumer. So we have the capability of even introducing the manual checkout. So over here, in case the uh, checkout is manually, we can directly input it in the system itself. And in case the item is low on stock, we can also provide real-time alerts to the merchants. The product um, can also be set up by the merchants themselves by just clicking on this create item button and clicking on the camera button over here in order to open up the camera app and scanning the barcode of the item itself. But you may ask me why merchants does all these things manually, right? So one of the features that we are highlighting is the loan feature. So as they keep on doing these features more and more, they're going to get better idea about their behavior. And then they can apply from the loan services, which is being offered by your bank itself. Lastly, perhaps the most interesting feature is the wallet feature where merchants earning from the digital transactions itself will be stored in the wallet and then they can utilize this money to pay up their loans or even pay up their credit card bills. So if you are a financial institution such as community banks or even a credit union who would like to solve these merchant issues, please feel free to contact us. We are more than happy to jump in on a call in order to solve your problems. Thank you so much and have a great day. Bye-bye. From San Francisco, California and Istanbul, Turkey, Batu Shot with Mall IQ. Hi, my name is Batu Shot, co-founder and CEO of Mall IQ. As Mall IQ, we're a location intelligence and AI platform. We digitize the real-time purchase intent of your customers in the physical world and make it insightful and actionable. We improve the interchange and interest revenues by improving share of wallet, frequency, activation and retention for your card and loan products. With our analytics dashboard, you can understand where your customers are visiting, which restaurants, which retailers, and which venues, even if they're not using your cards. And with the campaign dashboard, we empower you to engage your customers in real time based on their current and historical locations. And we have a mobile SDK that easily integrates into your banking app. We are two co-founders with PhDs in electrical engineering, experts in machine learning and indoor location technologies. And I have a team of 30 experts in payment, loyalty, and mobile app development. We're backed by great investors and accelerators such as 500 Startups, FIS and the Venture Center. We are a reliable, scalable global service, serving more than 10 million monthly active users and process over 5 billion monthly location calls. We have a great set of customers in banking, payment, loyalty and retail space 
such as BMP Paribas and Samsung. Nowadays, customers have many ways to pay. In addition to the credit cards in their wallet, they have mobile payment platforms and virtual banks. So there's increased competition for payment platforms. So if your bank customer uses another bank's credit card or cash, you will be completely blind to those purchases. You wouldn't get the valuable transaction data and you wouldn't earn the interchange fee. So what if you knew what your customers wanna buy, when they're about to pay, and where do they shop? So understanding physical purchase intent is key. But getting this data is hard because GPS is not accurate when stores are close to each other and venues have multiple floors. And it's not feasible to place beacons, cameras, or hardware to all these stores. This is where MOLIQ technology comes in. We have an indoor and outdoor location technology that is store level accurate in understanding which floor, which corridor, which store your customer visits in real time, all without any hardware. So we are both store level accurate as well as scalable. We convert the location data into customer journey and actionable insights. Compared to the geofencing, the previous technology on the left hand side, which covers around 100 to 200 stores, on the right hand side, we can detect the store level where we understand the person visits Nike for five minutes, Lego for 10 minutes, and Adidas for 15 minutes. And it's not just shopping venues. Customers visiting furniture and electronic stores is a really good indication that they're in need of personal loan, housing developments for mortgage, and automobiles for car loans. Compared to online purchase intent, we are the only technology that can understand your customer is in a shopping venue, spending quality time in a sports goods store. And we empower the apps already in their phone that they opted in to engage them with relevant offers. It's good for the customer because it's substituting opening up the app and scrolling through the offers. It's good for the bank because it's improving interchange revenue and creates loyalty. And it improves the relationship between the merchant and the bank. We have a mobile SDK that easily int integrates into the banking app with no personally identifiable information. And we generate 10 times more data than the transaction data the bank has. So it's both the size of the data and the time limits to deliver anonymous personalization at scale. And we're not just sending push notifications, we are enriching your CRM database for better customer segmentation, make data-driven partnership decisions, and even help with fraud prevention. We've done this for over five years and have great success stories. We have improved notification to click 20 times compared to geofencing, notification to store visit three times, and notification to purchase more than four times. And in these COVID-19 times, it's even more important to understand your customer's purchase intent before it's too late and engage them because each trip outside of the home is more precious. Here's an example how you can promote your customer using your credit card at a partner store like Nike. Here, you don't only engage people going to Nike, but people going to Adidas, Puma, or even the sports department of Macy's. In our dashboard, you can easily achieve this goal where you set what the customer sees, you set either a category like sportswear or individual brands like Adidas, Puma, and Nike. Since all the stores and locations are already in our database, it only takes a few clicks for you to achieve your goal. Here's another example where you can utilize MOLIQ's unique store visit data with your purchase data. Here, you can select people who've been to Starbucks in the last 30 days and subtract the people who already use your card to make purchases at Starbucks. So this is a great segment to increase your credit card usage at Starbucks. We have great coverage around the world and in US. And we are serving banking mobile apps with our deep technology that is both accurate and scalable. We don't require any personal identifiable information 
Your customers don't need to install new apps and your team doesn't need to change their campaign workflow. So thank you for attending FIS FinTech 2020 demo day. Have a nice day. Exciting work from our cohorts at Surfly, Scilot, and Mall IQ. I hope you feel the same. My name is Spencer Jones. I lead a product organization that supports the FIS banking segment. I've been involved with the Accelerator for the last two years. We've had great progress with Wayne and team, along with Esther and Ernie and Chris. We're happy last year that we finished as a runner-up as best accelerator. That was great progress. But we're thrilled this year the team took home the trophy as the best accelerator. The accelerator program is critical at FIS because we recognize innovation is not just an idea. Innovation is a combat sport. It sharpens your perspective. Whether you're bumping up against new startups, competitors, or evolving client expectations, you want to continue to sharpen your perspective on the market need and the market opportunity. It's my honor to introduce the next group of presenters. They're exceptional. Square Tech with their offering in the security space, we hope to accelerate them with Rob Lee's organization around operations as a service. Expense One with their automated expense management capabilities, we hope to accelerate them in Royals business around cards, whether credit, debit, or prepaid. And Sirius with their, offer, their offerings around document management, we hope to accelerate them into Kelly's business around image and content management. They're all fantastic. But don't take my word for it. See them in action for yourself. Take it away, team. And now for our second group of founders. Our first presenters from Mumbai, India and Woodbridge, New Jersey, Anand Naik and Pankit Desai, co-founders and CEO with SecureTech. Hi, this is Pankit Desai, co-founder and CEO of SecureTech. Hi, this is Anand Naik, co-founder and CEO at SecureTech. Today, banks are faced with dual challenge. First is this challenge about making sure that you are compliant to FFIEC and OCC guidelines. And on the other hand, there's these two classes of banks that have been created. People who can afford a lot of technology and a lot of people to run that cybersecurity technology. And then there's this set of people who have to figure out how to bring this technology together and integrate. So this has become a space of haves and have nots today for solving the same problems and same audit related challenges that OCC and FFIEC uh, ask banks to address today. It is with this background that SecureTech intended to start its operation and look at seeing how we can simplify security for you and how we can consolidate this technology landscape. Cyber attacks today on banks, credit unions, are often done by attackers which are sophisticated, stealthy. They start by gathering intelligence about you. And with this work from home scenario, it's much easier to target endpoint devices with the new perimeter and move laterally within the organization by installing the malware. At some point in time, exfiltrate this malware out of your environment to make sure that uh, you know all the relevant information is available with these attackers. And if it's a ransomware, uh, go and ask you for a ransom around it. Pretty standard attack kill chain that takes usually 12 to 15 technologies for all banks and all credit unions and other financial institutions to go and address. These 12 to 15 technologies do not talk to each other and often create this complex world of figuring out what your security posture is, what your compliance posture is, and how are you responding to security incidents. We at SecureTech intend to simplify this by bringing it down to three products. In order to make sure that your investment stays protected, all these three product lines can coexist with whatever pieces of those 12 or 15 that you have invested in. And at the same time, it allows you to create a single dashboard view to give you a single pane of glass that tells you what your security posture is in real time, how it improved or decreased over a time period, through a time series analysis and allows you to get into uh, you know answering this question on compliance three product lines like i mentioned at the bottom what you see is managed detection and response which is the single dashboard that i mentioned it's a 24 by 7 saas offering that we have 
At the core of all our technologies that we offer is uh, deep learning and AI that eliminates these human errors and eliminates the need to interpret new threats because as you are aware, security is a moving target and it is a constant battle to find what is going to come in the future. So MDR brings this capability of predictive analysis, predictive security uh, monitoring, as well as create a real-time incident response in a complete automated manner. Endpoint security on the other end allows you to make sure that your devices stay protected. And instead of running five or six different technologies on the endpoint to protect that device or to update patches on it, and EDPR brings it together as one single solution again, which can coexist with whatever uh, other technologies that you have invested in. IGA on the other end focuses on access governance and the employee side of the house, which uh, allows you to automate the entire access governance process for applications and non-application related access within your organization. What you see here is a dashboard of MDR. This is a single pane of glass that I was talking about which allows you in real time to see what's happening, how are you getting attacked, who's attacking you, what are the user behavior anomalies that you see in your environment, and how are you responding to it. While you have the capability to drill down, it also gives you a capability to create a C-level uh, view, uh, time series analysis and a security analytics uh, view that allows you to define proactive security uh, elements for your organization. It also has the ability to customize the view to make sure that you are having a uh, understanding of where you are getting attacked from and how these attacks are getting uh, addressed from your environment uh, perspective and thereby giving you a complete compliance dashboard. On the other hand, we have uh, IGA, uh, which is the user access governance piece that I touched upon. This product allows you to automate this entire process of onboarding of full-time employees, contract employees, and service-related employees that come on onto your premise. It does so by making sure that there is a roles and entitlement mapping. So people have, they work on this concept which OCC defines of least privilege access and access given to only uh, places and applications and details where people require it. So this product allows you to automate this entire cycle based on roles and entitlement. It creates some birthright access uh, for basic things like Windows ID, uh, email ID, and uh, some other file and folder distribution access. It has a workflow built in to allow you to do new joining as well as promotions and transfers. So things that you will have to keep on changing when people move around in the organization, when they get transferred, when they get promoted. There's another mandate that OCC tells us about uh, reviewing the access on a periodic basis, at least on an annual basis. This product allows you to automate that entire access review process as a campaign, which means that you can do in an ad hoc basis or on a specific application or a specific department basis or as a policy which allows you to trigger it based on some frequency of timeline or frequency of some critical uh, aspects that uh, the guidelines or OCC will ask you to uh, address. So, and finally, this whole process about, uh, you know, how, uh, how you handle uh, access revocation when people are on notice period during resignation or retirement or uh, when they exit the organization. So, all in all, what this product does is automates the entire access cycle for you, which we have seen largely most of the banks uh, and financial institutions either have a ticketing based solution or a semi automated people based solution to address this problem. As an organization, like I said, we aim to simplify security by consolidating landscape. Um, around 350 people organization today uh, with 150 developers and four researchers in security and um, are present across three continents. Uh, thank you for your time and we hope uh, that we empower your growth uh, as your trusted partner without any fear of getting compromised. Thank you. Our next presenter from Spokane, Washington, Victor Yefremov, co-founder and president with Expense One. Hello, my name is Viktor Yefremov. I'm a president and co-founder of Expense One. Expense One is located in beautiful Spokane, Washington, and I'm pretty excited to share with you what we're all about. Now, to understand what Expense One is all about, you have to understand the problem we're solving. And the problem is this. 
Banks don't have proper digital tools that they can offer to their small business customers to capture, control, and reconcile their business expense transactions. And here's what I mean when I say this. If you look at the typical workflow of manual expense management, it's it's extremely time consuming, it's error prone, and it's very inefficient when you have to capture expense receipts, submit it to manager, then reconcile them in the back office. Now, if you look at existing solutions available within the banking space offered by the following companies you're looking at here, what they all have in common is that all been built for the enterprise level companies with high level of complexity, functionality, high cost, and almost impossible for small business to get access to those tools. Therefore, they're forced to come to non-bank providers like Brex and Divi, who has tons of money and making access available to business card with an ease with some really good digital tools. And then you got expense management companies that up until recently used to partner with financial institutions, but now have all launched their own expense management cards and also incentivizing their customers to use their card versus your bank cards in exchange for rewards and points. And so this is where we come in with Expense One is we're working exclusively with financial institutions, helping you to compete and offer great tools that you can offer to your business customer. Now, our product is both the app that you would use on the go as well as the backend panel. And so with an app, we build it very simple, very intuitively where your business customers and their employees could capture expenses on the go, which is really simple. Go into expense page, fill out that information manually if you're using personal card or cash, and pretty much at that point, click submit. If you're submitting expenses for the first time requires a reimbursement, all system will prompt if you want to get reimbursed right back into your account, making things much more simpler. You can also capture mileage expenses on the go, and it's automated system just to start drive and drive at the end of your destination and you're pretty much done with it now if you're capturing expenses using your bank card uh, or company card I should say things become more streamlined and it starts with getting a push notification sent to your phone whenever you're submitting expense for the first time that looks something like this all you got to do is just tap on it. Once you swipe the cards, it'll take you to the page where the dollar amounts filled out, merchant category would be filled out. All you got to do is just take a picture of receipts and literally be done with it. Everything is simplified, streamlined um, in real time. And now if you are a manager having to review other people's expenses, you can do so also in the review section where you can see pretty much all the necessary information, reject the single expense, approve all, uh, and move on with your day. And lastly, on the, on the phone section, this is where you can also see available limit that has been preset for you by the admin or deactivate the cart if one got lost. Now, this is a backend panel, something that would be integrated and accessible within your online banking. This is a place where controllers, CFOs, or business owners would go and manage all their expense transactions. And this is where a lot of time is spent trying to reconcile, match, make those transactions with submitted receipts. And this system will streamline and reduce it by a handful. And so this is where you can see all the basic information, images or receipts attached with individual transactions where you can approve or reject an individual basis or reimburse those ex employees that submitted expense with personal cards or mileage. You can also here create your type of reports or have shortcuts to expenses that require your attention. And once all of them been approved, you can export them into PDF with images of receipts, Excel, or QuickBooks. Now, in the employee section, this is where you can add employees, add multi-level approvals to them, as well as assign a company card and set card limits on those cards with daily, weekly, monthly, which days of, uh, the, uh, which days of the week it can, cannot work, or merchant types. And this is especially a feature that is heavily sought after by companies that really gives them the control that companies are looking for and really goes along with company policies. And speaking of policies, this is where you can enforce and automate some of those policies such as required category, tag, approval if it's above certain dollar amounts, and more to come. And so the other functionality is mileage setting, reimbursements, categories that would convert into GL codes, and analytics where you can see them by date range, such as expenses by category, departments, merchants, employee types, etc. Now to sum it all up, 
What you have here is a powerful tool that you can offer to your small and medium-sized business customers to capture, control, and reconcile their business expense transactions. With also company control over expenditure whenever they're using your bank card versus any other cards, resulting in both time savings as well as money. Now, the best part is with Expense One being integrated within your online banking, it becomes the system of record for your business customers. That very strong layer of stickiness, that retention that all banks are looking for, and also being the top of wallet choice whenever you can offer functionalities like card controls, real-time transaction view, etc., uh, giving you that competitive advantage. Now, if you are thinking, what is the ideal target market this could be offered to? Well, this would be a perfect fit for a company that have between five to 50 users submitting expenses on daily basis, not company-wide employees, but the ones that are submitting expenses regularly. And the best part is we're looking to offer this solution to you at only $15 per month per business with unlimited users on it. This is just a friction of the cost that's currently would be available in comparison to other solutions. And so as a company, Company, we're also there to provide you with technical support, onboarding support, <clears throat> marketing materials, and as well as product demos like this one. We thank you very much for your time and looking forward to talking to you sometime in the future. From Mountain View, Colorado, David Brooks, founder and CEO with Cirrus Secure. I'm David Brooks with Cirrus Secure. To win in today's environment, teams must collaborate remotely, execute faster, and create a perfect experience for clients who are demanding the convenience and safety of a digital relationship. Our purpose at Cirrus is to enable those relationships right across the enterprise. However, we know that in our industry, oftentimes there's important information that's pertinent to those relationships, and it's embedded in documents. Those documents are typically collected using manual processes, email, Excel worksheets, and frankly, it's hard to overstate the frustration, dysfunction, and delays that result. Of course, document chaos usually shows up in the form of a question. Where are we? When are we closing? Now there's a solution. With Cirrus, we're client first, order from chaos, built to serve, and that philosophy shows right through the software platform where every feature has been requested by a user in order to better serve their customers. One bank was able to onboard 942 loan applications the very first day of the PPP loan program. Of course, others have had success as well, increasing their pull-through rate, organically doubling their loan production two years in a row, and finding time all over the place because of the savings generated by our software. We've served banks as large as $3 trillion global banks, down to local community banks, specialty lenders, and even a law firm who found value in our software for organizing their workflow. With over $8 billion in transactions hosted, we're excited to share with you why Cirrus is a solution for document chaos and onboarding digital relationships across the enterprise. So let's take a look at a live use case. We have a public-facing web page that's been enabled to drive wealth management traffic. We can tie this page to a digital ad campaign. And when they arrive, visitors are able to input some very basic information, uh, click through to the next screen, where they're invited to upload specific documents relevant to their review. We can post attachments, marketing materials, uh, loan applications, uh, and detailed instructions on what needs to be uploaded and why. Now I'm going to place a 27 megabyte file, that's our 800 page vendor report. And as you can see, that's uploading very quickly. We do accept files up to a gigabyte, over 150 file types, and we're scrubbing those files for malicious scripts behind the scenes. Now when the client requests the free portfolio review, you can see that Cirrus has fired a message back to the digital ad server, uh, enabling things like A-B testing, and other success tracking. The client is shown a thank you message, as well as being presented with a date and time stamped record of exactly what they've uploaded. Here's another example where a borrower may be having trouble making a payment on their mortgage. So we've enabled a web page. Again, the same consistent look and feel and functionality to present a unified front across the enterprise. 
So if the client needs a request assistance, they're able to click through and provide some basic information. Again, attachments are available uh, to facilitate that very, very efficient workflow. And the client can simply click request assistance now. This cuts down on a tremendous amount of manual workflow, being able to provide a single unified front for many different, very specific use cases across the institution. Now inside Cirrus, you can see we have a very clean, modern and informative dashboard that's also available as a mobile view. So if you're sitting in a manager's office and being asked, well, what's in your pipeline? Just pull it up on the phone and you can drill right in. So let's look at a live, uh, what we call a checklist. Now, this case for Midwest restaurants is built around our digital checklist architecture. As you can see at a glance, all the application documents have been uploaded and approved. We've got the ability to share notes internally and this really very sophisticated cloud-based document previewer. So I can quickly with a glance see what's been uploaded and validate that it's what I'm looking for. This one doesn't look quite, quite right, so I can pop it out and, uh, and see that this is not exactly what I requested, although it is interesting information. We can convert, extract, combine, and even remove passwords from PDFs using this embedded functionality. We've also got e-signature capability using both native and integrations with companies like DocuSign. What's really exciting is that outside the institution, the client is able to see the exact same view that's available inside if you allow them. So again, I can see that all of my application documents have been reviewed and approved but it looks like I'm missing some business financials. I can also see that we're still in the underwriting stage of this request. One of the great things about making order out of this chaotic process is that downstream, we can create different cuts of the file for different use cases. For instance, in my lending career, we did a lot of construction loans and the construction loan administrator didn't necessarily need to flip through tax returns. They wanted to see the draw schedule, the pro forma and inspection reports. So with a couple of clicks inside Cirrus, we can uh, enable pre-built, pre-designated packages of the file to be uh, provided by the system with, a, with just a click. And so we have a single auto-indexed PDF of this loan file that's perfectly renamed according to the bank's naming convention with an index auto-nested and in perfect perfect order, the same order every single time. That's a huge time savings so that when an auditor comes calling, you don't have to pull folks off the production line. Simply send them a package from Cirrus or give them a login and let them uh, get exactly what they need from the system. We do have internal team chat, live support, uh, user support, and then video walkthroughs of uh, specific features inside the system. So it's highly evolved. It's very, very modern, clean interface, packaged as an API integrates well with others, and we have some exciting upgrades coming as well. So hopefully this is a very clear uh, case for why Cirrus is a great tool for enabling digital relationships, eliminating the document chaos, and creating a great experience, not only for the customer, but also for the associate inside the financial institution. So that's Cirrus. We'd be happy to hear from you. Please contact us if there's anything we can do to assist you, and I hope you have a great day. Wow, and what a testament to the innovation impact being driven by this year's cohort. Hi everyone, I'm Ernie Boudet, Vice President of Product Strategy at FIS. These past 17 weeks, which included our new four-week incubator phase, have been exhilarating and rewarding. Working with our amazing companies and of course our valued clients. Congratulations, class of 2020. We couldn't be prouder of what we've accomplished together or more excited about our opportunities ahead. So next up are our final four presenters representing more cutting edge solutions that will shape the future of financial services. So please join me in welcoming Stratify, LeapXL, DOSIC, and TrustStamp. Well done, everyone. Take it away. And now for our last group of presenters. 
For the last group, our first presenter from New York, New York, Laura Kornhauser, founder and CEO of Stratify. Hello, everyone. I'm Laura Kornhauser, co-founder and CEO of Stratify. Thank you for taking the time to learn more about Stratify today. I want to also thank the Venture Center, the Innovative Banks and Mentors. We had the pleasure of meeting through this great program and of course, FIS. Without your partnership, support and guidance, we wouldn't be where we are today. As you all know, and unfortunately many of you probably feel, financial institutions are facing increased pressure combined with tremendous uncertainty right now. Unconscious bias is exposing banks to significant financial and reputational risk while also costing them profitable customers. Citigroup estimates US GDP has lost 13 trillion since 2000 due to discriminatory lending practices alone. Additionally, a once in a lifetime global pandemic tells us the future will not look like the past. As all these factors converge, how do banks confidently take action? Stratify is here to help banks make risk-based decisions like who to lend to or what to investigate for fraud, allowing you to increase profits and ensure regulatory compliance. To sum it up, Stratify's technology helps you answer questions too important to get wrong and too sensitive not to understand. We have built a decision management platform that bridges the gap between largely manual, rigid rules-based approaches and autonomous cutting edge machine learning to deliver precise and reliable predictions, even when the past does not predict the future. There are no black boxes with Stratify, and unlike competing software in the market, you do not have to be a data scientist or even write a single line of code to work with and derive value from Stratify's platform. Here are a few examples of the results we have achieved with our customers that use our decision management platform to improve credit risk assessment and fraud detection. One of our lenders increased loan approvals by 2.4 times while also slightly reducing the expected default rate, increasing profitability by identifying new credit worthy borrowers using more precise default predictions and analysis with Stratify. In fraud detection, one of our customers was able to drive a three times reduction in false positives, saving wasted time and money while keeping end consumers happy and protected. We're also able to help you shorten the development to deployment cycles for models, allowing you to get up-to-date models into production faster. In this demo, I will focus on our credit risk assessment solution and show you how Stratify can help you identify insights from data and uncover unconscious bias in both data and models with ongoing monitoring and proactive alerts. Understand how risk is changing with full visibility into how your model makes predictions and individual decisions so you can see what is driving changes in both your risk and return. And importantly, take action to improve your models and mitigate risk, growing your customer base while driving millions in additional profits. So let's dive right in. We start on the dashboard where a lender can look across their portfolio and see the performance across various time ranges and indicators. Here, the lender is, uh, identifies a breakdown in performance in the last period. Expected profit is moving lower as the risk of default is moving higher. This also generated an alert that model performance is breaking down. Stratify's unique clustering technology automatically helps the lender group similar loans together to understand what is driving this breakdown in performance, and importantly, take action by generating new rules to improve the model performance going forward. These mind rules are a great example of how Stratify's technology automatically extracts insights from data, insights targeted specifically to fix problems exactly where the existing model is struggling. To view the updated model, we go to the modeling page where you can see a fully transparent and readable model, which is a combination of rules and dynamic weights based on insights from data. At the bottom of this model, we see the newly added rules that were found automatically from data. All of these rules can be edited without writing a single line of code by the lender to incorporate that lender's expertise and insights. On the back testing page, the lender can compare and analyze the performance of their corrected model against their previous credit risk assessment model and check swap sets to see how decisions change between these two models 
or analyzes places where one model made the right decision and the other model made the wrong decision. The lender can also filter by any variable to discover new insights about a subset of their customer base. In the model gallery, the user sees a list of models built or imported onto Stratify's platform and can compare performance side by side. The user can deploy a new model into production without writing a single line of code or requiring their IT department to rebuild the model. Governance rules defined by compliance ensure that only validated and approved models are eligible for deployment at any time. Now we're back to the monitoring page where a few months later, the financial performance of the model remains strong, but there's a new risk. The dynamic monitoring and Stratify's platform recognizes a bias emerging in the lender's model and proactively alerts the lender to this important risk. On the tune page, the user can specifically identify what is causing this bias and do something about it. Here the user sees what part of the model is driving the unconscious bias and can take action, adjusting that part of the model to mitigate the bias and then saving these changes into a new model. This type of selective tuning, whispering into the ear of the AI to remove biases, is a big differentiator of Stratify's technology and something simply not possible with other machine learning methods. Back again on our back testing page, the user can see the results and the actions they have taken to mitigate this bias with the visibility and control to see that the bias has been controlled for with minimal impact on financial performance. With that, I wanna thank you for your time today. Here are my contact details. I look forward to hearing from you. We'd love to talk about how Stratify can help you identify risks, including unconscious bias, understand the drivers of those risks, and importantly, take action to improve your lending and fraud decisions going forward. Thank you again for your time. Our next presenter from Little Rock, Arkansas, Marla Johnson, co-founder and CEO with Leap XL. Hello everybody, I'm Marla Johnson. I'm the CEO and co-founder of Leap Excel, and we are in Arkansas. Leap Excel brings you the power of no-code technology, both data connectivity and application development. So we can connect everything and do anything in record time. Our leadership team is made up of experienced entrepreneurs who have built successful tech companies. We formed Leap Excel in 2018 to help companies innovate faster despite shortages of technical personnel and resources. We can very quickly and easily connect to any data source, including core banking data and spreadsheet data. We've developed a universal API adapter and transformer that can bring data from any API instantly into Leap Excel. Then, on our no-code application development platform, within days, we can create applications that would take months, if not years. Here are some solutions we created with Leap Excel. For board and company leaders, we created real-time dashboards so they can see insights into products and portfolios. We built full-blown applications in just days for big consultancies and innovation teams. We created compliance and regulatory reports that include a complete data audit trail. And we collaborated with support staff to automate processes and workflow for reporting that reduced their time investment from hours to just minutes, even while being more accurate. Overall, the entire bank wins because it can innovate faster and at less cost than hiring additional programmers and data technicians while reducing a broad range of risks. A bit more about that risk. A billion people are comfortable using spreadsheets, and they are easy to use, but it's well documented how easy it is also to make costly mistakes in spreadsheets, even for large and tech savvy companies, costly as in billions of dollars every year. We get it, we love our spreadsheets, and bankers love their spreadsheets. We designed Leap Excel to ingest spreadsheet data and formulas so you can keep the benefits of the business modeling, the product intelligence, your calculations and trends over time that you have built into your spreadsheets. But we turn them into apps and we remove the risk. We convert your spreadsheet into databases 
and we create applications around them using our eight great risk reducers. These are controls that remove ongoing spreadsheet risk. So let's go to the platform and see how it works. When you're a Leap Excel customer, you'll see a hub of applications that we've created for your company. This could be one or many, and it can grow over time. When we create an application, we set up all your data feeds, including APIs, databases, core banking data, and spreadsheets. Then we can pull that into the Canvas area, just as we're doing here with a USDA feed of farmers markets that are open in the United States and their distance from your zip code. Within seconds, we can turn any API data stream into an application and deploy it just like that. Spreadsheets work just as easily. We can ingest a complete workbook with all its tabs and all its formulas in just seconds. We can drag and drop the data into forms, charts, and graphs, and even change our minds about which graph we want to see. On the right side are a number of HTML elements and functions, including Active Directory Single Sign-On, that you can just drag and drop into the application solution. These represent hours and days of development time. Let us demonstrate how we could work with you to co-create a mobile banking solution. We select a mobile canvas and we use elements and functions that we've combined. Everything in Leap Excel can be combined, edited, and reused. And again, if you don't like the way it looks, after checking it out in the emulator, then we can change that on a dime. Even the ability to deploy and invite people or groups to view or modify the app is really fast and easy. Simply drag and drop the name of the group or the person into the app. Here's an example of an app we developed to help a bank save hours of time reporting Freddie Mac residential loans. It reduces hours of work to just a few minutes and all of the data is audited and with changes recorded. We're now collaborating with financial institutions to almost instantly deploy specific solutions they need in order to be more efficient and competitive. With Leap Excel, we are speeding solutions for banks so they can bring more data fintech solutions into alignment. They can acquire more customers with less pain. They can manage complex processes faster and have better, more flexible customer services. But if you're not sure where to get started with Leap Excel, you can receive an assessment of where you most need to digitize your processes. You can even learn how much money it will save you in doing so with the digital twin methodology. Especially for banks that have been through a merger or an acquisition, this assessment has proven itself useful in pointing out where there's overlap and delay resulting in millions of dollars of savings to the bank's bottom line. Here's my contact information. Let me know if a problem jumps to mind that we can quickly solve together. Thank you to everyone at FIS and at the Venture Center. You guys have been amazing. From Dallas, Texas, Abhishek Gul, founder and CEO with DOSIC. Hello all, thank you for joining for the FIS Accelerator. My name is Abhishek, I am the CEO and founder of DASEC. At DASEC, we are revolutionizing collections by introducing AI-driven collection strategies. We are able to come in using our unique proprietary data to connect with those customers to collect more payments. I have been part of the financial services fintech world for the last 15 years, and I've worked with a lot of large banks and fintech companies. And one thing I saw common in all the companies is that being, the, being not able to allocate resources for collection projects. So with all my experience and with the AI and machine learning algorithms, we are able to present DASIC to you. DASIC is really solving the age old problem of collections of how do we really personalize and engage consumers to influence them to pay. 
as you know in the industry today a lot of the a lot of the lenders are following the shotgun approach of collection that is calling the lend, calling the consumers four to five times every day and due to the change in consumer behavior there's a lot of call opt outs as well as block calls that are happening which are really detrimental for collections since we are not able to connect to those consumers it's very difficult to collect the dollars from them with the dasic solution which is a next generation tool we are really able to understand the consumer segment and being able to engage them by providing influencing messaging through multiple channels and help to collect more dollars as well as optimize uh, collection we are using we are leveraging ai and machine learning algorithms to really go in and understand the depth of the data understand the transaction level data understand the disposition level data with with multiple channels to really understand how to connect with those consumers when they are going to pay how much they are going to pay and this is allowing us to really collect more dollars from the consumers it has three specific benefits from a lending company perspective one is we are able to improve the agent efficiency because you would not need to call a lot of consumers second is it's able to collect more dollars because we are able to understand high risk account really early on and be able to provide effective strategies to connect with these consumers as well as being able to provide settlement strategies and operational strategies that help you to collect more dollars from this consumer and lastly the the qualitative side of the business that's the consumer experience we are really able to improve the consumer experience significantly and reduce the amount of reduce the amount of challenges from a consumer experience perspective the core ip of dasic is built around our historical data we have collected more than 31 million payments using the rhythmic based technique which is connecting with consumers across multi channel based on their behavior based on their consumer personas and we have created about 125 consumer profiles in the last 3 years this is the unique uh, proprietary data that we have that has really helped us to engage those consumer secondly we have this aggregated data across multiple lender so this gives lender an additional advantage because we are able to really benchmark our data against their consumer data which really helps us to go deeper in the collection process so thirdly we are with all this collections we have been able to create more than 7 billion plus proprietary data points and 100 plus proprietary variable that helps us to really engage this consumers think about a product like a large decision tree the uniqueness about dasic is we are not only looking at account level data transaction level data we are also looking in the historical interaction that the consumer had across multiple channels channel let it be phone email text as well as we are looking at daily level files to really understand what does it mean from an ability to pay perspective what does it mean from willingness to pay perspective and that is where our ai is able to learn about the consumer and being able to go deeper and being able to engage the consumer we have about 125 nano segments or personas that is we have about 125 collection treatments that we have already proven to really optimize the dollars collected as well as optimize collections here is a quick roi example of one of our one of our lenders in this case before they started with dasic they are about 59 collectors and they were collecting about 3.4 million dollars with our product they were able to reduce the number of collectors to 42 and collect 3.5 million dollars this was pre covid so uh, we were able to really help them optimize and optimize their collections now with during covid we expect that we the same number of collectors would be able to process more dollars and more accounts and that's where we are able to provide a very high value for for your company uh, we really have unique solution compared to the rest of the market a lot of folks have been focused on the payment propensity we really focus on contact propensity and optimizing the dollars collected as well as risk based strategy we have two different product types one is our ai concierge product which i talked about where we are providing daily contact strategy and we also have a dart rapid product where we are providing the scores on a monthly and weekly basis so this really helps you with the implementation of dasic strategies dasic is a very easy to bolt on 
is that Elastic is a very easy bolt-on product. It can easily get bolt-on to your current system, and we can provide you recommendations back to your email and text platforms. We do not require any PIA data or substantial or, or, and a very limited IT development to implement our product. Lastly, it's very easy to implement and work with us. We provide, we basically take, uh, we love to do a small pilot to show the value of our product, and then we can go for an ongoing contract. So it's very, very easy and effective to collect, uh, to work with DASIC and see the value of our product. So thank you guys, really appreciate your time connecting today. We are really looking forward to optimize more dollars and being able to optimize your collection process using collection AI driven product. Thank you. Our last presenter for the day, from Atlanta, Georgia, Andrew Gawasak, founder and CEO with TrustStamp. Hello, my name is Andrew Gawasak and I'm the president and a co-founder of TrustStamp. I want to start off today's presentation by thanking uh, all the folks at the Venture Center and FIS uh, for making this event possible uh, given all of the circumstances this year. So TrustAmp brings a new level of privacy, security, and access to identity through the use of AI and biometrics. Uh, we've provided technology and generated significant revenue with customers such as Synchrony, um, who's used our technology since 2017, um, and with partners like MasterCard, who's become a strategic investor. Now these issues of security, privacy, um, and access have become increasingly relevant because of these numbers and the impact they've had on many businesses. So with over 7,000 breaches disclosed and over 15 billion personal records exposed in 2019 alone, traditional identity verification tools are no longer secure. And these breaches have compromised data like usernames and passwords and knowledge-based authentication questions and answers. And these breaches have caused significant and consistent increases in fraud as well and forced many businesses to find new ways to establish customer's identity and enrollment and for reauthentication. So because of their ubiquity as well as their usability, um, many believe that biometrics are the answer to these problems. Um, and while we believe that biometrics are a part of the answer, there is a risk. So if your username and password are stolen, you can always go and reset them. But if your biometrics are stolen, they are that username and password that you cannot reset. So how do biometrics work? Well, when a biometric is captured, a template is generated, which is usually just a series of measurements between different features, say on your face or your palm or your fingerprints. Um, and this template is encrypted and stored by many biometric providers. And that encryption can be decrypted. So TrustAmp doesn't follow this conventional approach. And so to protect biometrics from theft, we convert the biometric template into an irreversibly transformed identity token, or IT2 for short. Once the IT2 is created, we can destroy the biometric template, and that allows us to authenticate users with biometrics while preserving the customer's security as well as their privacy. So for this demo portion, I wanna show how the IT2 is created if you were to use facial biometrics and enrollment. Now, it's important to denote here, um, our solution can be overlaid on multiple biometric modalities from different vendors, and so that can help break vendor and modality lock-in for you. Um, but in this particular instance, we're using facial biometrics, and you'll see we're able to compare it to an image on a photo ID for added assurance. But what sets us apart is not the biometric capture or the ID document validation. What sets us apart is the creation of the IT2, which you'll see here. It's unique because it lets you provide better usability for your customer using biometrics while providing enhanced privacy and security, both for your own systems as well as for your customers. And so one of our customers has reported a significant increase in sales by using biometrics as well as an immense fraud savings. So in addition to allowing you to take advantage of that usability, the IT2 can often identify fraud that other tools miss. Um, the technology has actually helped a client take down um, several fraud rings and even stop significant amounts of fraud. And here's how it works. So when this user, John Smith, enrolls for an account, he provides his traditional information like his name and his address. Um, and as you saw in the video, he's going to um, take a photo uh, and generate a biometric token. Uh, then when he tries to enroll using another identity, 
this time pretending to be Adam Brown, um, he's going to scan his face again. Now, normally this would be difficult to spot using just traditional uh, personally identifiable information. But because we have the token, it's going to flag that there's a similar token in the system, but there's a mismatch between the name and the address, and that this is a possible duplicate identity. So not only can you flag more potential fraud, but once you've identified the token of a, a potential fraudster, you'll be able to receive similar alerts if that token ever appears in the system again. So TrustAmp has been tackling these kinds of challenges for some major financial institutions. Uh, for Synchrony, we provide technology for their customer enrollment as well as for uh, account lockout. We enable them to onboard and retain customers that were a at risk of being lost um, if they had used traditional methods like uh, one-time passwords, um, usernames and passwords, and other personally identifiable information. Um, now, our fastest growing opportunity is with MasterCard, where we're working with their humanitarian and development group, uh, where we're working to provide legal identities to over 100 million undocumented families who would otherwise be financially as well as societally excluded. So as you can already tell, um, we, there's a lot of applicability of this technology. And as one of our partners at MasterCard said, really the only limit to the use of TrustApps technology is your imagination. So you can use it for a variety of use cases, such as customer enrollment, um, step up authentication for pin and password reset, um, as a second factor for wire and ACH initiation. Um, you can even use it for your own identity access management uh, for internal tools. And we know that for many financial institutions, they have to account for um, other third-party services that they use as well as legacy infrastructure. So our implementation model is flexible. Our technology can be easily deployed either on-premise, in the cloud, or via API and SDK for use in either a web-based instance or in a native app. So in conclusion, if keeping bad guys out adding new customers and rewarding your existing customers with a seamless identity experience is a priority for you, you can reach me at the email below. Thank you everyone for your time and attention. How incredible are those companies? We are thrilled with the progress that all of you have made throughout this process. Now it's time for the most interactive part of Demo Day. We have an MVP named, named by our MVP committee, which we'll announce momentarily, but you guys decide the audience choice awards. And while we know it's not easy, we ask that you pick one company that best fits best in show today. Now it's time for you to vote. On your screens, you'll see the Zoom poll with all 10 companies. Just like you've done with the other polls, choose your favorite, hit submit, and we'll announce the winner shortly. While you do that, there's one man who's been a champion of the Venture Center in financial technology for years, and he's taken the call straight from Central Arkansas to the floor of the US House of Representatives. That's our own former banker and current Congressman French Hill, and we are incredibly grateful for all his support over the years. Thank you for your dedication to innovation and to the people of Arkansas. Ladies and gentlemen, Congressman Frenchell. Well, thank you, and what a treat it is to be with you on Demo Day 2020, even under pandemic conditions. I want to thank uh, and give my congratulations to Wayne Miller for his leadership, Gary Norcross and the team at FIS for their extraordinary leadership at putting this FinTech Accelerator in the demo operation right here in Little Rock, and of course, Governor Hutchison for his dramatic support of FinTech development in Arkansas as a major economic development tool. You know, for years, the world has traveled to Little Rock. They've come to Little Rock to sell their invention to the largest retailer, Walmart. They've come to Arkansas to learn the hottest, newest way to grow rice around the world. They've come to Little Rock for cancer treatment. And for years, they've come to Little Rock to learn the most recent and expanding trends in FinTech. So I'm grateful to the Venture Center for their outstanding work to expand that FinTech reputation around the world. What a great effort today and congratulations to all the companies that were in 2020 Demo Day. And one final word, in Congress, you have our full bipartisan support. And one thing that was a big victory in this Congress was Maxine Waters of California and Patrick McHenry of North Carolina, both sides of the aisle, coming together to create our FinTech Task Force and our Artificial Intelligence Task Force. We're committed to make sure that America is a leader in FinTech, and we'll change our federal laws, we'll change our federal regulations, we'll work with our states, 
for the kind of regulatory environment we need to make sure that you can innovate, serve customers, and build the great financial companies in the years ahead. Thanks for letting me come by and bring greetings and congratulations today. Am I pitching this to you? Back to you? Well, I think so, yeah. Do it. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Congressman. So the MVP is the award we give to the company founders who were the most engaged with our programming, who got the most out of every single opportunity we put in front of them, who, got, who have delivered in every way to FIS and its client base. It was nearly impossible to pick a winner this year because, like so many of you, we love all our children equally. However, we did, and this year's MVP is from Woodbridge, New Jersey, in Mumbai, India. Congrats, Pankit and Anand, SecureTech. And now for the final award. The audience has spoken, and you spoke loudly. The 2020 winner of the first ever virtual FIS FinTech Accelerator Best in Show Award is Trust Stamp from Atlanta, Georgia. So this has been an amazing experience. Um, we missed having all of you founders in person and bankers, but we did it. We did it in a way, and you did it in a way that's never been done before, and you all excelled. In many cases, you did it across time zones until early, early, early in the morning every weekday. You did it with children crying in the background, dogs barking, internet connections failing, PowerPoints refusing to load, homeschooling, suit jackets and sweatpants, back problems from sitting at a desk too long, and a million other things. The endeavors of the past 17 weeks were non-trivial, and I have to say that if you can take your business through 2020, I believe you can take it forward as far as you want to in the future. We will, of course, see many of you in Little Rock once we're able to gather in numbers again. Program's almost over, but not quite yet. First, I want to call out specifically Hamza Kadir, Nora Helmers, who many of you came to the program met. We would not be able to do this without their help. Thank you, both of you, for doing such an outstanding job, sincerely, and carrying part of this massive load. And the final deliverable is the ringing of the gong. Collins, Wayne, take us out. <laughs> Thank you for attending the virtual 2020 FIS FinTech Accelerator. We'll see you next year.